Hi, my name is John Cook and I'm a hazardous materials technician with the North Metro Fire Rescue District. Today, we wanted to bring you a video to talk about personal protective equipment. Uh, in light of the recent environment and what's going on, uh, we've noticed a lot of people running out and buying gloves as well as masks to protect themselves uh, as well as their family from the coronavirus. We want to make sure that you are protecting yourself to the fullest and not accidentally contaminating yourself. We're going to talk about public space and private spaces. Your public spaces are anywhere that you go outside of your house, outside of your car, outside of where you're, anywhere that anybody else in the world could be touching, could be sneezing, could be coughing, or anything of that nature. Your private space is where every, any place where you have cleaned, you've deconned your house, you've, uh, you've deconned your car, the inside of your car to be your mobile clean spot. Um, so going to and from the stores, that kind of a thing. So the first piece of equipment we're going to talk about today, we're going to talk about gloves. Gloves are meant for uh, protecting or keeping things off your hands, keeping anything that you took come in contact throughout the day, it's a barrier to keep things off of your hands. The purpose is, isn't to protect your hands, it's so that when you are done or you need a clean space, you can quickly and easily um, have a clean space by removing one glove. So that's the purpose of the gloves. I like the theory that's kind of going around out there right now where you have a dirty hand and you have a clean hand. And that being is that when you have two gloves on, you tend to forget that you have two gloves on. You start touching things. You start touching uh, your wallet. You start touching your phone. You start touching the dirty food that everybody else has touched. You touch the gas pump handle. And then you get back in your car and you keep drive home. And then you get into your house. And then maybe at the end, in your house, you start taking your gloves off at your house. But what you've done is you've taken all those, uh, all the viruses and all the contaminants on your hands and you've transferred them from everywhere you've been and everywhere you touched in your car, everything, um, including getting back to your house, opening the garage door, going in, taking the groceries in, and now you've exposed your family and, uh, your, as well as yourself to the, this virus and to the contaminants that are on your gloves. So I like to think about it, the thing that's kind of going out there right now is having a, a clean hand and a dirty hand. So with the clean hand and dirty hand, it kind of t is exactly that. You have a hand, it kind of remind, it reminds you that something's different and that you need to be always thinking about what you're touching and what you're doing. So um, with my dirty hand, I'm going to touch things like um, I'm going to pull groceries off the shelf. I'm going to use the pin pad at the checkout stand. I'm going to handle, I'm going to use that gas pump. With my clean hand, I'm going to be getting my wallet out, I'm running my credit card, I'm using my cell phone, those kind of things with my clean hand, keeping those contaminants off of my personal space and then keeping them on the contaminated. Once that glove's contaminated, I move into a clean space. So say I go to the grocery store, I pull some groceries down, put them in the shopping cart, I'm pushing the cart, I've sanitized the cart that with a with the stuff that they have there, pushing the cart as best I can with that one dirty hand. Um, when I get to the, the checkout stand, I'm using the, uh, I pull out my wallet, my credit card with my clean hand, I pay, I sign with my dirty hand, I get to the car. Once I come out to my car, since I've cleaned ahead of time, I've deconned and cleaned my car, I know that's my mobile clean space. What I want, you to, what I want to do is I want to take off as soon, I want to take off my dirty glove, move my personal, personal clean stuff into the car, get into the car, and then use some sanitizer to then decon my hands as well. Obviously, the best thing right now is to wash your hands with soap and water for 20 seconds, but in an instance like that, you'd want to use some sanitizer of some, something nature of that to um, make that, air, that area in your car clean. At this point in time, since I've cleaned my car, everything's clean, I can drive home now, I can touch the steering wheel, I can t touch the radio, I can drive home, I don't have to worry about contaminants because I'm assured that contaminants have transferred from the store to my car. One last thing we want to talk about with gloves is how to take gloves off. First thing we're going to do, whether you have uh, two gloves on or one glove on, with the two gloves, you're going to pinch just underneath the heel, you're going to pull your hand back or just a little bit, pinch the extra glove back and we're going to pull it inside out. Now everything that my hand is now is clean and is deconned it, and everything right now with the glove at this point is also clean. I'm going to keep this and ball this up in my hand of my, the, the glove I still have 
I'm going to do the same thing with my wrist, uh, bend it back with my pointer finger. I'm going to point up with that glove and then away from me, I'm going to use that finger to pull that glove inside out as well. We're pulling this away from us, um, just like we will talk about with the mask. That way we're pushing the, uh, the contaminants away from us and away from our body. From there, you can transfer your groceries in from the car to the house because you know both, safe, uh, both spaces are safe spaces and are decon spaces. Um, at that point in time, I would also, you can also use a bleach solution to squirt on the bottom of your shoes or take your shoes off. That way you don't track those contaminants in from the store and to your house. And another step to take would be to take some sanitizing wipes and maybe wipe down the boxes of like your pasta or your rice or your, your bag of flour or whatever you bought uh, and wipe those down to also decon anything that might have landed on them as well when you brought them in. Uh, your produce, you can uh, be sure to obviously wash uh, your vegetables before um, you put them in and dry them off before you put them into your fridge or before you consume them. The next piece of equipment we want to talk about today is going to be the N95 mask or just a surgical mask or a mask in general. So the first thing you want to do when you get your, when you get your mask, if it happens to be an N95 mask, what we want to do is we want to put it on your face. You want to try to breathe a few times in and what's going to happen is, is that you're going to feel a little puffing or pressing against your cheeks and your mouth. Now, masks in general, N95s especially, don't work if you have a full beard because there's not that um, that skin-to-skin -skin contact. Um, the next thing, step is, is that once we get it on our face, we put the elastic bands on. Put the elastic bands on. Then each one of the N95s, whether you have the duck bill or this one, is going to have a metal bar across the bridge of your nose. You want to press that tight, almost so it's uncomfortably tight. What we're doing there is we're creating that seal across our nose so when we breathe in, we're not getting any gap around the side and allowing the, like the, the virus to get in from the sides. We're forcing all the air we're breathing in through the material up front and then uh, exhaling it back out that way as well. To take the mask off, first thing we want to do with taking the mask off is we're going to take the bottom strap off first and then very carefully taking the, the top strap off and we're going to pull that mask out and away from ourselves. So in conclusion, we just want to remind you um, to really try to pay attention to those public zones and those private zones and those dirty zones and those clean zones and how to really limit the amount of contaminants that you bring from those dirty zones to your clean zones to try to keep your, you as healthy as possible. Um, even if you don't have those uh, uh, PPE, those gloves and, those, and the masks, there's certain things you can do like taking off your shoes or washing your clothes and especially washing your hands as often as you possibly can when you come back from those dirty zones or anywhere out in public to keep yourself healthy and minimize your potential for exposure.